Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of the Red Shirt Interviews, that show where we get really cool and awesome people to talk to us. And one of these days, I'm actually going to figure out how I do that. And remember to get our names in here. That's Hi. right. Hi. I'm Lasty, the Pseudo Kiwi. And I'm the illustrious Patrick M. And in this episode, we have an extremely special guest with us from the Gamers Darkness Rising, Hands of Fate, and actually even the original Gamers, we most don't people don't know. Confirm that for certain. <laughs> and many, many mm -hmm. other really cool projects. We have with us Jen Page. Thank you. Yay! Thank you. We are definitely not worthy. Okay, yeah, you're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Jen. And did we lose you? I, <laughs> I think we just oh, lost you. I think you are. I think you are. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. <laughs> well, oh no. Hold on. No, we're good. We're Hold good. On. We're fine. It's okay. I think it's delayed for about a minute here. Yeah, we had just a a, a, a a slight problem there, but we're good. We're it's just it it's you. I'm I'm going to blame it on you because Okay. I, I think, need to blame on somebody. Okay. Tell me when you hear this because it's glitched. I can hear it now. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So you can hear us clearly now. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say, uh, okay, thanks yeah. for, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> it, it is a pleasure and an honor. Um, Jen, you know, we are obviously, we're huge fans. Um, we have followed... Uh, we've followed actually uh, all the work from the Dead Gentleman um, and Zoe works that have included yourself. Uh, I, I, I tell everybody that we talk to from from uh, from the group that yes, uh, actually exactly. the Gamers Darkness Rising was the actual film that I watched that convinced me to go to film school. Oh my gosh, that that's fantastic to hear. That's yeah. just so cool. <laughs> yeah, it has been a, it has been a uh, since I actually got in. Um, to working in film, uh, working with you guys has been you know has been a goal of mine, and now we've been able to do a few things and and help out in the on the back end of um, some of the projects that's coming out right now. So it's been real great. So again, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. What we, what we want to do, you know, is we start off by mm -hmm. giving you know finding out what was it like for you to to get into to acting. I mean, I uh, I ask this question pretty much of every actor guest we have sure. because we always get a different answer. Um, what uh -huh. what kind of got you got to getting into it? Um, well, it was something I was always interested in. And uh, but I grew up painfully shy, like super super shy. And if if I had more of a support system in high school or friends who would have dragged me in there, I think I would have done theater in high school, but it wasn't until I grew up more and was kind of on my own and, and started actually, you know, kind of the self-support thing um, that, and actually started with writing. I joined a writing group. Um, but I worked at Wizards of the Coast and nice. we, oh. yeah, for We're years, excited. 13 years. 13 years, actually. And uh, during my time at Wizards, they have a lot of groups and things like that over email. And, and uh, my friend Angel was starting a writing group. And so I was like, sure, why not? Try something new. And I joined this writing group. And uh, Matt Vansel was actually an intern editor at Wizards at the time. And he was in the writing group. Well, and that. that's, well, that. that's how I met him. And I was reading some of his, his prose and his scripts. And he was like, hey, um, we're having a little screening of this movie called uh, Demon Hunters 2 at uh, Pacific Lutheran University. And uh, maybe you should go. And so as a writing group, me and my other friend Michael in the group, um, have you guys seen Revamping Doyle? It's a, a short film that that gentleman did. We well, he plays, he plays the lead in that. So uh, okay. Michael, uh, me and Michael went down to see uh, Demon Hunters 2. And uh, I've told this story so many times. But uh, it made me laugh so much that dead gentleman just couldn't get rid of me after that <laughs> well, and uh, yeah we're not, we're not complaining <laughs> and uh i i did help out a lot with uh the filming of the gamers i did a lot of location scouting and wardrobe and makeup and i had that little bit part as the uh the barmaid was actually my first acting gig and i auditioned for the role of luster with everyone else, even though I was full on part of the company at that point, I auditioned uh, for that role and they gave it to me. And I've been kind of taking roles ever since. It's not. It's not, I, it's not just the um, the acting part you've done, because I, as I understand, you actually helped out with with costuming. 
yep. you, you helped out with makeup. Uh, you did PA work as well. So you prosthetics. Yeah, prosthetics for, uh, for the gamers. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> but with right. that, 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 that's actually a really good sign of of, uh, of a performer who who has paid their dues. It's not just like, oh, look, I want to be in acting or I want to do this or I want to, you know, I want to be in front right. of the camera. It's always about finding where you can get in and have that opportunity. Um, so obviously you. Well, it, it starts out. Really, yeah, it starts out really small, right? You, you know, you take on many roles because you need to. And it's like, you know, what what hat can you throw in to, to make this better? Because you're only helping yourself. And I did a lot of like logo design work and, you know, a lot of the graphic design and, and stuff like that as well. And, you know, it was enjoyable work. But, yeah, when you're an independent film, you wear many, many hats. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, actually, you did the uh, – you've done a lot of artwork. Uh, I mean, you, you've also done – I mean, we've seen a lot of your modeling work um, photographically, but you've also <laughs> done a lot of artwork as well, you know, the original mm -hmm. concept art. Um, for Darkness Rising was your work as well. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, I joke that I designed Luster's costume before I had to wear it. <laughs> well, that'll teach you for design. Yeah, that's it. right. That'll teach you a lesson, <laughs> won't it? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, the, the good thing about it, I guess, is not only if, if you had to wear it, the trade off was that Christian had to wear it too. Right, right. And I actually built it, too, because I'm like, well, I have access to my body. I might as well be the one, you know, sewing it and trying it on, you know. Yeah. But, well, yeah, we, we with uh, Christian's costume, we actually had the, the serious conversation of whether or not he was going to wear falsies or not in his <laughs> costume, and we all decided... No, no we, didn't, we didn't need to go there. Well, no, when he doesn't have it, it. It's actually funnier seeing, seeing him just uh, almost dressed in drag, if you like. Um, right. But, um, yeah, I, I, sitting there and, and watching all these things and, and knowing all these little background tidbits is, is cool. Nick, you said uh, uh, when you're working for an independent company, you have to wear many hats. Uh, we mm -hmm. had a, a, a guest come on our show a couple of times who has been a fantastic person to talk to. And he uh, worked in, worked on a lot of projects, including Jurassic Park. Uh, um, Jurassic sorry, Jurassic World. World sorry, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Jurassic World recently. Uh, and he basically told us when he first got into acting, it was the same thing. I mean, he brought, was brought in for a part where he had a speaking role, but, and it was a, it was a major company or a major studio doing the project, but he's still in between takes, you know, if they're breaking down things, he's moving chairs, he's helping out, <laughs> you know, doing all the little bits and pieces. So, mm. um, yeah, sometimes you just got to get stuck in to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, you, you've. I won't say that you've played the same, the same kind of role a lot because you've had quite a bit of variety, but ultimately um, there is this, I don't know, I, I like to think of it as a... Commonality. <laughs> yes, there's definitely a commonality. And it's all, I like to think of it as, as your own personal shtick. Um, mm -hmm. you, you play characters that are witty, but at the same time, you don't know. There's a fire behind the eyes. You don't know. You know, you know something's there, but you just don't know what it is. Um, you know, I, I, one of one of the funniest. I think one of the funniest things I've ever seen any of your characters do um, was when Drazul uh, possesses Luster, and you're and you're being suspended in the air, and you blast the Bard. Um, I just like you know what you know. I was sitting there talking about. It, I said, I bet you that wasn't even Drazul. That was just her. <laughs> that was just Luster hating on the hating on the Bard. Which is fine because yep. the Bard. That's yeah, what he's there for die you know right it's yeah. like I, she's the type of character it's in a, it's an attack of opportunity right that's right <laughs> you know I, I, as um as phil phil said in the original gamers i move into backstab position right <laughs> so, right with a minion knife uh yeah with a minion knife. <laughs> mr stabby that's right mr stabby <laughs> <laughs> so you know, obviously you've worked with these guys for a while now, uh, and you guys just have just wrapped up the, the Kickstarter campaign to mm -hmm. to get Darkness Rising on Blue Way, which was a success beyond any expectation that any of the guys had, um, mm -hmm. and it was fantastic. What I think for us as fans, one thing we loved so much was seeing the, the enormous amount of outpouring of support by all the fans. Uh, because we just can't get enough of it. 
you know, I, I, one of the things that Brian said in the teaser video for the Kickstarter campaign was that, <laughs> that Darkness Rising is the benchmark. It is when, you're, when anybody's trying to introduce somebody else to gaming these days, mm -hmm. this is your go-to movie. It's like it required reading, you know. If, if role-playing was a, uh, yeah. if RPG games were a, a university course, this would be required viewing. Right. And, yeah, completely. And like I said, we, we saw the um, the enormous amount of support from the fans, and I think it ended up. I mean, the whole thing ended up over a hundred thousand dollars, and and almost two thousand backers um, in just thirty days. You know, it's it's really mm -hmm. great. It's really great because mm -hmm. not only is it an opportunity for us to get something out of a franchise that we love so much, but also it was an opportunity because you guys were so gracious to come back and reprise those roles that you had played 10 years ago. Most people don't even realize that that you guys, I mean, I know the movie came out in 2008, but you filmed it in 2005, uh -huh. you know? Right, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean. It I, was I, crazy, because yesterday we, wow. go ahead. Oh, I just <laughs> no, say 10 years ago, I actually, yeah. uh, um, I think I was living, I think actually 10 years ago, I was living in New Zealand. Uh, you know, I can't even wow. remember, I can't even think of what I was doing ten years ago. You know, and here it is we are. pretty crazy. Yeah, it does. Uh, do you did you find like coming back and doing the little little sketch that you guys had? Um, you know, that scene that was promised to all the fans for reaching a certain goal. Did you yeah. feel it was like a, a huge reunion of a big family? It. Uh, we just filmed that yesterday, and so. It it was really fun and and hilarious, but like a lot of it was kind of surreal. You know what I mean? Like we're all in the same costumes, we're all, you know, acting the same characters, and and yeah, that's really not an opportunity you get very often. Like you know, with Project London or Chop Saki Boom. Mm -hmm. Well, Chop Saki Boom is still filming, but like when I watched um, Project London, it's like, like wow. be able to go back as luster wow this is such an opportunity in itself and to share that with people and we are certainly aware and we certainly feel the the connection the response that we get from the fans and it's an, another thing we just can't get enough of just sharing that and and the love of gaming and the humor and just the lightheartedness so yeah, it was it was pretty special yesterday to be able to hang out with everyone and then like to have the original cast from the original gamers there as well. That was also like a, a sub layer of mind trip. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was like Inception or something. <laughs> we, we have to go deeper. <laughs> wait, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah. No. Please. Please don't. Because this this. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know what those guys got up to after the after the end of Gamers rolled, you know. Besides but, waffles. Yes, waffles. There's always waffles. Everybody. I mean, I, I think, I think to some degree that has become a pop culture icon in itself. Too bad uh, we forgot to bring this. <laughs> to this but yeah. Oh well. What What is it with waffles? I mean, I mean, I know, I know that was mainly a. It was a, just a, a thing. Just seemed like a like a, an appropriate thing at the time. And you, just, like, you just never know. You just never know what's going to stick. It was just another funny, you know what I mean? But what's what's uh, pretty funny to me about that is that I've got waffles in uh, Darkness Rising. I've got uh, pancakes from Dirty Do-Gooders, and I have crepes <laughs> in Project London. So I don't know what's next. I was say, I was like, are, they, are they just trying to ply you with food? <laughs> yeah, it's the breakfast food group. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, it's Jen Page's career. Yeah, what one, one day it's gonna be there's gonna be a trilogy or a, a, a box set of uh, of the Jen Page the food series. You know, it'll be all the yeah, new, all, all the projects you've been in that have uh, featured different breakfast foods. Almost kind of reminds okay. you of the uh, the the bit from. Austin Powers and Goldmember when Goldmember's trying to offer offer him up like a smoking a pancake, smoking, smoking a, pancake a bong and a blintz, a pipe and a crepe. Okay. <laughs> blintz, right. Yeah. Blintz is next. That's Why right. Why are we blintz that, in this? I'll know I'm a shoe in. <laughs> chop, socky, boom, possibly? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. They definitely have me eating in that show. I'm eating Cheetos and red vines and... <laughs> 
gobstoppers. Yeah, <laughs> everything. My goodness. Wow. wow. <laughs> it, um, Cheesy. You know, puffs. <laughs> Look, look at that. It's just that look of, yeah, it's cheesy puffs. I, I, I almost expect. Cheesy puffs. <laughs> I, I expect the Homer Simpson. Oh, I drool out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be very like. <laughs> that's perfect, too, because I, I think that, um, I think that's, um, and actually, it, you bring up a really good point, is that in movies like this, I mean, and not only just the gamer stuff that you've done, but everything you've done, it it actually gives an opportunity to bring strong female roles into films. And mm -hmm. since and although, this... Although Luster, I wouldn't consider the strong female that'd be like a role model, despite my daughter watching, right. who, watching yeah. Gamers do right now. Possibly. Yeah, actually his kids are, right now as we film, his kids are actually watching Darkness Rising. They just can't get That's enough a of distraction. it. distraction. They like that movie for some reason. I don't know that, what it is. I that think, is awesome. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, though, my daughter will look at uh, Joanna slash Daphne f as her As a role model instead of the, Sorry. the chaotic evil <laughs> or the, <Sure. laughs> the the luster who, well, actually, uh, let's give let's give luster some credit. She does become a, a lawful good cleric at the end, even though it's Ish. probably, yeah, even though it's probably <laughs> eating away at her soul. <laughs> okay. Right. right. It's like, who's tarnishing who? <laughs> That's right. Like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, so basically, in a genre, like, the kind of movies that you're in, the kind of projects you're in, I like to think of them, I mean, they're kind of classed as fantasy comedy, if you want to put a label on them. But ultimately, I think that this mm -hmm. began, this began a, mm -hmm. a whole new subgenre of film. Uh, because there wasn't anything like it. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of imitation stuff come out or, or a lot of inspired works come out after the fact. But I think that the way you guys handle, the way you, specifically the way you play your roles, um, it brings a whole new subgenre to a, a comedy slash fantasy, fantasy movie. Um, and it's good. It's good to see a lot of positive female uh, roles starting to come out and, and be there more often. Uh, because, you know, obviously this is a very male-dominated sort mm -hmm. of uh, industry. So not only do you have it in the film industry itself, but you also have it in this particular subgenre. Just like, so like I said, to see a um, good female lead, uh, roles as well is very um, promising for the future. Uh, yeah. So now, you know, I'm, we're going to play a little game, okay? I, I okay. Have, I have been waiting to do this all day. We're in... We're actually going to introduce a brand new times already. <laughs> yes, we're going to bring a new segment to the Red Shirt interviews. Typically, we like to sit and just have a, a nice little informal chat with our guests because they're so gracious to actually give us the time and talk to us. Especially you. Oh no. What is it with you? <laughs> what is it with you? Do you always have to put me down? Yes. Yeah, pretty yes, much. he does. We're going to play a new game. It's called Bard, Bieber, or Both. And, and, the okay. and the purpose of this game is I'm going to give you a little factual tidbit, and you have to tell us whether you believe it, it for referring to Flynn the Fine, the Bard, mm -hmm. Justin Bieber, or both. And I will, okay. be, I will be the buzzer if you get it wrong, so. That's right. Okay. All right, quest, question number one, or fact number one, thank you. Can convince any woman to sleep with him? Both. Ah, the bard. <laughs> <laughs> I would consider them women. That <laughs> yeah. Anyway. True. Technicality. Yeah. Technicality. Yes. yes. Has the letters D and G on his underwear? Uh, bard. <laughs> and both. <laughs> Actually, that's a little tidbit that apparently Justin Bieber does wear Dolce and Gabbana underwear, and I'm not going to tell you how I know that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not okay. Gonna, you don't want to know what his, his desktop screen is. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> no. Ha okay. <laughs> Next fact. Next fact. Sure it is. Okay. Okay. Ha has had naked photos circulated without their knowledge or consent. Oh. Um, I'm going to go with Bieber. That's true, actually. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> thanks for mine. Thanks. Great. You're right. Okay. okay. Here's actually a good one. This is probably going to be really yeah. easy. It okay. may not be okay. real fast. Ha has utter contempt for those in the party who are responsible for their well-being. 
<laughs> Bard. Aunt Beaver. Definitely Beaver. <laughs> Definitely Beaver. <laughs> this game makes no sense, and it's just for no. a good... Although, when you think about the answers, you're right. You're, we're absolutely right. We'll give right. you five points so far. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's, it's, it's like whose line anyways. The points don't matter. It's just good fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a slightly fatter Drew Carey. <laughs> slightly? Oh, I went there. True, sure you did. There. All right. Next he's going to punch me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next fact. <laughs> okay. Inspires the masses to follow them with their music. Uh... Neither. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. We'll, we'll that take option. it. We'll although, take it. <laughs> although it might have been the bard. Definitely not Beaver. Okay. Next fact right. is useless in combat. Um, both. Yay! Yay! <laughs> 89 points. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Next fact is afraid of lightning and thunder. Um, bard. Both. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so now you know Justin Bieber is afraid of thunder and lightning, just as we all suspected. And last, but yes. certainly not least. Is the Thunder Buddy song involved? Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Is really a fat bearded guy named Scott? Uh, both. Yes. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Both. <would>. both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are today's winner. Yes. I'm not sure what you won, but. We'll email. We'll email it to you whenever we figure out how to email. What large, what what's the email? Large blocks of stuff. <laughs> large blocks of data. Yes, and after the email is gone. Yeah, away. I don't it, know. it'll be uh, nude photos without consent, right? That's right. <laughs> how do you know that this ha How do you know we knew this happened? <laughs> Actually, Jen, it's it's. I can um, sense a pattern. That's right. It, there's a pattern. I mean, uh, you know, I talked to you about the fire behind the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, about to roast us, I think. I think that's about the right. I think she's going to actually uh, send off the flaming hand of fiery doom through the camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one other question. Um, what is there anything else that you wanted to talk about in particular? Um, anything on Chop Saki Boom that you want to discuss since yeah. you're currently in the middle of that? Yeah, we... Yeah, we have four new episodes of Chop Soggy Boom available right now. So a lot of people have only seen the first four. We've mm -hmm. got the other four out now. They're are they're on YouTube. You can find us on the YouTubes the, and on the inner tubes. On the inner tubes, yeah. And I'm gonna be. We talked about Gen Con before we started recording. I'll be at Gen Con this year for uh, Peter Atkinson's booth. He is he's gonna be promoting his Caldeo project, oh, nice. which is a multimedia. Uh, fantasy project in which I play an elf druid rogue and that's a lot of fun so if anyone's gonna be a Gen Con this year uh, hunt us down and we're gonna have uh, promo stuff going on and uh, and a lot of cool things and you can get like a little bit of a sneak peek at the project exciting cool um, and sort of uh, to bring us towards the end of this episode I wanted to, to touch a little bit on your photography you know, yeah you've done a lot of modeling and of course we've you know, we've seen the uh, the vast um, mm -hmm. array of photos that have been, all, you know, the mermaid sequence that you've mm -hmm. done, um, the Daenerys Targaryen set you did. Those were yeah. amazing. I mean, Thank you. Uh, you know, when you do something like that, I mean, uh, you said you talked earlier in the episode. You talked about when you were younger, you were painfully shy. Do you uh -huh. find, do you find that this actually, you know, by putting yourself right out there in front of everybody, you know, wearing the kind of costumes that you wear, do you find that it's, um, it's kind of, it forces you to, to go against that um, propensity to be a little bit shy on things? Um, gosh, where to begin with that? That's such a complex question, right? Um, I got into modeling because to me, it's an easier form of artwork. I don't have to draw or paint, <laughs> and enough. and uh, you know like the, like the mermaid concepts and stuff. I, I'm definitely in the middle of developing a whole mermaid project, and the stuff that you guys see is like stuff I'm doing, so I can share it now. But I I've got a lot of stuff in you know, like in secret vaults that uh, I'm not sharing yet because I want to finish the project and figure out what I want to do with it, and before I throw it out there in into the world. Um, but when it comes to that, I don't know. I feel so lucky that I can create artwork and have an audience to share it with. Mm -hmm. And and like like I said, like the Mermaid Project, like I will go out and purposefully like the aerial uh, shoot that I did and 
and I love Game of Thrones. And those were just things that like I do that to share it with people and and geek out and <laughs> and just, you know, create something and, and to talk about it and and just I don't know. To me it's it's a form of art where one way or another we make people feel something, right? And right. uh but I'm not coming. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. So here's the thing about me. I, I'm an Aquarius, and we contradict ourselves all the time. True, I'm a very shy person, but at the same time, it, it's not. It's not a question of modesty so much. I'm I'm very much like the characters I play. I just am who I am, and the, you know I have some great relationships in my life that are just so supportive, and I'm in this place where I can just be myself and risk things, put myself out there, and I really, I love hearing people's stories, I love sharing my stories, and I love just that connection that I can have with people, and and that just, I, I gotta relax and just <laughs> do that, you know, I can't, I can't let being shy be in the way, because that, that doesn't, I mean, it's a powerful force, but that isn't who you are. And so anyone who is out there who wants to try something, whether it be film work or modeling, if you have a passion, just one step at a time, right? Just do it. And like with Dead Gentlemen, no one gave us permission. No one said, hey, go make great movies. It, it's an experiment. You try and it doesn't seem glamorous when you're doing it at all. You're just out there with a camera with your buddies, right? And that's yeah. all we were doing. That was all we were doing. Anyone can do this, you know, develop your talents, do what you love, and um, share it with people. You'll find your audience. Well, yeah, and you're absolutely right, and, and it's one of these things that um, we've shared the, the conversation with um, some of our other guests, and especially um, women that we, uh, that we interview. Um, there is a, um, an, an overriding sense that um, you have to balance doing something that is, pushes you beyond your comfort mm -hmm. zone while at the mm -hmm. same time doing something that um, inspires other people and and also allows them to be entertained, so you you kind of you're you're, in, you're caught in a balance. You're balanced between doing something that's kind of fun and, and a little bit um, just just doing it because you want to put yourself out there and do it, and also doing something because you know um, art isn't about the message; it's about the the effect that it has on somebody. You know, that's how, why they say art is so subjective. And you say that, you know, obviously you said you're an Aquarius. Um, I'm a Cancer and he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> or Leo. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, but it's, you know, you're right. There is a, a certain propensity to um, have certain reservations about what you do publicly. So, you know, and obviously we're very, very thankful for you providing that le you know that kind of artwork for for us to appreciate so before I uh, go down a, a much longer conversation about things oh thank you yeah, oh. <laughs> we're going to say thank you for joining us on our show today and also we have to let you know that you're fantastic and as a special honor you are our honorary third red shirt geek today yes even though, yes. even though you're not wearing red, and that's fine. And we don't know any characters of yours that actually die. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's you haven't none of your characters die, so we can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's a very special honor for you to be able to get a red shirt. In fact, actually, she's probably the red shirt that all the other red shirts are afraid of because they know they're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So again, thank you, uh, thank you so much, Jen, for talking to us, and we will obviously keep a, uh, an eye on your work, and we will. Uh, Definitely. Yes, and we will share everything that we can with our viewers. It has been an absolute honor and a privilege to uh, talking to you today. Uh, I'm Laz D, the Pseudo Kiwi. And I'm the illustrious Patrick M. And <laughs> may your phasers be fully charged. I got it right this time. Yeah, that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> excuse me, line. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Jen. you so much, guys. All right, folks. Thank you. Peace out.